You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. The humiliation. A narcissist may talk about feeling humiliated, but they don't actually. What they're experiencing is the loss of control that would come with what you understand to be humiliation, a feeling of weakness and powerlessness. But where they talk about being humiliated, it is done to provoke other people to respond to it, to assure them that, that was not the case. Or where they recognise that there has been a humiliation, more likely to be sympathetic by way of supporting the pity play that has been issued by the particular narcissist. A narcissist will be humiliated by the behaviour of others, and it will either cause wounding or more usually challenge fuel, either way both are threats to control, but the narcissist themselves doesn't actually experience humiliation because the narcissism gets in first to head that off at the pass. Instead, it will result in some form of ignition of fury and the doling out of the appropriate manipulation to nullify the threat to control posed by the humiliation. Humiliation, by its very description, would be massive challenge to the narcissist, that there has been a widespread wounding to the narcissist or widespread challenge fuel issued. It poses a massive problem to the narcissist and the narcissism goes into overtime to try and deal with this threat to control. There's the suggestion that Harry's wife has faced the humiliation. And it comes from that bastion of journalistic excellent, excellence, Heat News. It's been another week from hell for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, with Harry's wife spotted looking stressed as it was revealed the pair's much heralded £15 million deal with Spotify is over. She, of course, will experience anxiety and stress as a consequence of the pressure that is asserted by a threat to control. After a disastrous few months for the couple, we're told Harry's wife's feeling frustrated at her fall from grace, and Harry is in the firing line. That, of course, is not a surprise. She will recognise that she's not as popular as she once was. She's not that deluded to believe that she remains hugely popular, but she is at a complete loss to us to understand why that is. Rather than realise that it is as a consequence of her behaviours, all she will think is that it is as a consequence of people being hateful and not giving her a chance, that other people haven't done their job properly, that other people are causing the problem. For instance, Harry and Harry risks finding himself being placed in the position of a scapegoat. The Sussex's rep confirmed Harry, 38, and Harry's wife, <coughs> 41, were leaving the streaming platform and arranging to take their audio content elsewhere, just a year after the launch of the Archetypes podcast, which saw Harry's wife interview the likes of Mariah Carey and Serena Williams. Despite the multi-million pound deal with Spotify taking place in 2020, it took two years, sense of entitlement, laziness, lack of accountability, for 12 episodes of the podcast to be released, with sources claiming the ex-royals didn't reach the productivity benchmark to receive the full payout from the partnership, loss of residual benefit. And if that was not embarrassing enough for the couple, Spotify executive Bill Simmons used his own podcast to criticise them, saying the fucking grifters fuck them which, as you know, amounts to challenge fuel. Harry was further ridiculed when reports emerged that he had suggested interviewing Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump and Mark Zuckerberg for a podcast hoping they would open up on their childhood traumas. Again, demonstrating that he's a dimwit, but also for Harry's wife this is problematic because Harry's an extension of her. And as the couple face their critics head-on, TV personality Kelly Osborne, 38, certainly didn't hold back on her opinion of the prince. Talking on the I've Had It podcast last week, Kelly ranted, Harry's a fucking twat. He's a whinging, whining, complaining, woe is me. You were the prince of a goddamn country who dressed up as a fucking Nazi. And now you're coming back, trying to come back as the Pope? Suck it. Again, lambasting of Harry is problematic because he's seen as an extension of Harry's wife. And therefore what happens is that when he is criticised, she feels criticised and it's a threat to her control. What she does is respond promptly to that by not getting rid of Harry, but in a sense subconsciously jettisoning him as an extension. He's an extension and a beneficial extension 
when he's doing things which cater to the prime aims. So if he's garnering praise, he's an extension of Harry's wife, and that praise is hers. But the moment where he fucks up and starts to be criticised, that is then felt as a criticism of Harry's wife, and what she must do is temporarily jettison him as an extension. And she does so by devaluing behaviours or through withdrawal. Public opinion of the duo appears to have nosedived in America since they released their highly anticipated shit flicks documentary Harry and Harry's Wife last December. The show had plenty of viewers siding with the couple and calling them brave and inspiring, positive fuel. But while their TV deal was a success, Harry's bombshell memoir, Spare, came with far more cons than pros. Despite becoming a bestseller, critics branded the book, which saw the Duke spill his family secrets and more than one reference to his genitals, disastrous. And of course, at that juncture, she had to hang him out to dry, as I've explained in parts past him. And after a difficult few months, the couple were also ridiculed in a South Park episode and widely accused of exaggerating their account of a near-catastrophic car chase in New York. Things have turned upside down in the Sussexes' world, with former Suits actress Harry's wife now embarrassed at becoming a Hollywood laughingstock and fearing their once golden life is falling apart. Well, she doesn't experience embarrassment, but her narcissism could lead her to say that she feels embarrassed as a means to try and elicit sympathy or to lambast somebody. You've embarrassed me! thus provoking them into a response that caters to the prime aims. She will, of course, fear that their once golden life is falling apart, and this manifests as a subconscious threat to control. An insider previously told Heat, Harry's wife and Harry are both stunned by the harsh things that are being said. This, of course, is because they've both been existing in their awful shared fantasy. And the hits keep on coming. Harry's wife saying they must never give up, but that doesn't take away from the fact that she and Harry are currently perceived as a real laughing stock, And for all their bravado, it's a humiliating reality that's well and truly sinking in. Now it seems Prince Harry is answering to his wife with reports suggesting that Harry's wife sees the negative press surrounding his memoir as being the catalyst for their recent struggles, blame-shifting. And, with their future careers pinned on selling themselves as brand Sussex, their reputations are more important than ever before, leaving Harry's memoir as a frustrating stain on both their names. The sales may have been high, but the fallout has been so damaging, and not just in the court of public opinion, but now these cancelled deals with Spotflix, Spotify, rather, and their future with Netflix apparently hanging in the balance, our source explains. After reports emerged last week that Netflix could pull the plug on their five-year $100 million deal, they've tried to ride it out and hope that in time people would be more sympathetic or at least learn to forgive and forget any bitterness or animosity that came from airing their views in the manner they had to. That, of course, is demonstrative of Harry's wife's arrogance and sense of entitlement. Oh, I behaved like a shit, have I? Well, we'll just ride it out and people ought to forgive and forget me. What forgive and forget what I've done, rather. That shows her arrogance and a lack of accountability for her behaviours. But the article continues by saying it's been one problem after another, and now, with the benefit of hindsight, it's clear that Harry may well have gone overboard with some of these criticisms of his family. At the time of the book's release, it was reported Harry's wife had reservations. One source alleged she was left feeling nervous about the memoir's potential to blow up and combust, given the sensitive content. I would suggest that's a revision of history. She didn't give a flying fuck at the time because there was the residual benefit of the money coming in, and, of course, it was smearing the royal family, which allowed her to assert control. When it does blow up, and remember... Her narcissism doesn't cause her to think ahead. Her response to the blowing up is to say, oh, I was always concerned about this. Harry was the one that forged ahead with it. Blame shifting, avoidance of accountability, nullification of threat to control. Our insider reveals that Harry's wife is regretting not advising her husband against some of the more scandalous details of the memoir. Believe me, as a narcissist, she does not experience regret. She will just say it in order to blame shift and draw pity. We're told Harry's wife can now see that, whether it's fair or not, they are being viewed as these professional whiners. As I've explained, she is capable of seeing what she's accused of, she just doesn't accept that it's genuine, or correct, or applicable. And it's not as simple as her distancing herself, because she has to be seen as fully supportive of Harry. 
she's now regretting that she wasn't more hands-on or involved when he was putting his book together. The theory that she micromanaged what he wrote or had any say in the, micro in the manuscript is totally wrong. That is a revision of history. From a reading of Spare, it's entirely clear that she micromanaged it, and that's commensurate with her behaviour that we've seen time and time again. The same went for his interviews and promo tours. That was evidenced by the fact she let him do those by himself and made a point not to interfere. No, it wasn't about avoiding interference. It was hanging him out to dry, as I've explained in parts passim. With the couple's million-dollar deal seemingly evaporating in front of their eyes, Harry and Harry's wife's financial future isn't looking quite as stable as it did this time last year. And while, hot on the heels of the Spotify humiliation, there were rumours that a partnership with Dior was on the cards, the fashion house was quick to deny that there had been any contract negotiations, or indeed any contact at all, with Harry's wife. As the Duchess attempts to secure some money-making deals ASAP, including setting up her own lifestyle brand, we're told she's feeling anxious about the future of Brand Sussex. Finding a new platform to host their podcast is a priority for Harry's wife's now. Of course, that allows the assertion of control and that all-important residual benefit of money. They're not giving up and still feel passionate about making this a success somehow in the long run. Notice that she won't back off, that she won't shrink and seek the privacy that she's always complained about wanting. No, her narcissism continues to tell her that she's a story to tell, that people were interested in her, in her, that she's entitled to this money, and thus she is not going to go away readily. Indeed, notwithstanding the humiliations that have occurred as of late, although it creates a downward spiral, she is still going to try and command people's attention to draw fuel, to control them, and to get residual benefits. The only way that she will go away is as a consequence of everybody turning their back on them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.